you have said all season that you think 51 points is what it'll take. That's a win and a draw. Does that still look like the right number? Yeah, I mean, I always say, you know, if you average a point and a half a game, you're generally going to get into the playoffs. I think when you look at both the East and the West, that's probably pretty true, although the East is maybe a little bit lower than that. Uh, so, obviously, you know, obviously we would like to have won the game in L.A. I thought in the second half we did enough to to win the game and uh, you know and and we gifted them a goal you know can't give them goals but uh, you know I'm happy where we're at I'm happy with how we played in that second half you know we've got to go down to Houston get something down there and then come home and win at home. Is it nice to have a bye week this late in the year or is it almost just kind of a, an odd thing where you just want to keep playing to find your rhythm? It's uh, you know it's an odd thing I think but uh, it is what it is so so we want to try and make the best of it. We want to work a little bit. Now, obviously, we're missing some guys, uh, you know, that are gone right now. But uh, we just want to get some work in, and then also give them a little bit of time off. You know, this is our last sort of break, and then uh, push forward from there. What is the message to them? Obviously, you guys train this week, but then they have three days off. Is it, you know, work hard and then just completely decompress, or keep it in mind still the goal even when they're not here? I guess over those. Couple no, days? the idea, you know, the idea is to work hard these three days. Certain guys I know we're still trying to build their fitness with, so you know it gives us an opportunity to do that. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday is really more about hey, hey, don't sit on your couch and uh, and fall asleep for for 72 hours. You know, the important thing is you still do something, but get away from soccer a little bit, spend some time with your family. If you want to take a weekend away, you know, go ahead and take a weekend away, go for a walk, go for a hike, you know, play some tennis, whatever you want to do. But, uh, you know, it's a, a golf, but I don't know how strenuous golf is sometimes. If you're in the cart, right, it's not that strenuous. Uh, you know, and just and just get your mind away from it. How's Marshall doing? Doing okay. I mean, I, he was inside, uh, so we're starting to, and we're starting to ramp him up. Uh, you know, it's no concussion. You know, so that's good. He's been cleared of that, and uh, it's just a matter of, of the neck pain. And uh, now it's a matter of him doing some things. Is that going to increase or is it going to continue to decrease? I mean, it's already decreased a lot, and hopefully it'll continue to de uh, decrease. What about Valdez? How did he look? Uh, we just wanted to keep him inside. We're going to be cautious with it. You know, the MRI showed nothing serious, uh, which is good news. But it's just, you know, a matter of, okay, we got this week. Let's be smart. Let's not be stupid. And, uh, you know, let's give him some time. O'Neill Fisher, how is his tennis? Uh, he started, he's starting to work on the field right now, starting to do some running. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, the timeline, I can't tell you, but uh, but he's definitely, you know, he ran yesterday, and so today was the second day running. In that sense, um, with a couple guys recovering from injury, is it nice to have that extra week uh, to get a couple guys back in the fold here? Yeah, no, I mean, it all, you know, I mean, from that standpoint, it always helps you because you always got some guys with little knocks that are carrying things, and so it helps them. What is the status of the S2 guys, and I guess particularly the S2 contract guys, now that their season is over? Uh, I mean, Ezra knows that more in detail than I do, but, you know, basically they're, they're going to be training through, uh, uh, you know, at least through the 17th of this month, and some might be training a little bit longer. Uh, so we're, you know, we're just keeping, keeping them involved, doing some things, working with Ezra and Jimmy. There's certain times like today where we're going to incorporate them into our group. There's some times where we're going to drop some guys when our group is big down to them uh, so they can, they can incorporate them in training. Like the, probably the Houston week, we'll, we'll drop some guys, and we did that last week as well. But their, their status, though, is like, just like MLS. I mean, they're under your control. If you want them back next year, you're, simply, you're the only yeah, ones who I can sign Yeah, I think some them. have. Some have contracts uh, that run into next year. Some, uh, a couple guys have contracts that run through the end of this year. Some we, they've already talked to about, uh, you know, making sure they're with us again next year. Chad talked a little bit about his goal celebration on uh, Sunday. As a coach, does it make you nervous at all seeing a guy go and jumping up the way he did, sort of up towards the crowd and all that kind of stuff? I don't know. I don't know if it's Green Bay. Are we Green Bay now? <laughs> uh, you know, he made that leap. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, for me, I'm just happy to see he, he doesn't get injured in the celebration. That's the key thing. What was your message to him following the match on Sunday? Uh, you know, and my message to him before as well, you know, I mean, a player is obviously disappointed when he's not in the 18 and then, 
you get called in and uh you know i got a great story i'll tell you later but uh you know then you get called in and so you're like you know you're happy but you're still disappointed and you know one of the things i said to him before the game and i said to him after the game is one doesn't ask why we get opportunities it's just important to take advantage of them when they uh, present themselves but uh story i was going to tell you one of my old goalkeepers who's passed away david van Oli was the backup goalkeeper for the la lasers indoor team and in those days, you only dressed one goalkeeper. So he was in the Forum Club. They used to play at the Forum. Remember the great, the fabulous Forum? Uh, so he used to play in the Forum. So he was in the Forum Club. He probably sloshed down about three, four beers and nachos and a couple of hot dogs. And David was a big guy, big, big, gregarious guy. And uh, the goalkeeper got injured during warm-ups. So David's sitting actually up with me. He's sitting in the stands. We're you know going to watch the start of the game. They come up and say, "Hey, you got to play." He said, "Yeah, you're freaking kidding me. I can't play." He goes, "Yeah, you got to play." So he went down there. I think it was five nothing at the end of the first period for the other team. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so I was glad that Chad was in better shape than that. <laughs> Glad they don't serve beer in the press box. Exactly, right? exactly. The forum became a mega church for a while, by the way. Yeah, it's, it became a church, yeah. and now it's back to now it's back to being the forum and doing exactly. concerts and stuff. Yeah. The um, uh, with a little bit of uh, distance now, how, how was your Friday night? Uh, the, uh, Saturday night. Saturday night. Yes. I mean, obviously fantastic. You know, I mean, uh, you know, it's a great honor. Um, you know, I was able to thank a lot of people. You know, that's for sure. Uh, I think. Uh, one of the people I, I needed to thank that you, know, you always think back afterwards and, and you think you miss somebody so I'm gonna help you guys get the word out I think uh, you know for me Chris Henderson and his involvement with me from UCLA up until now I know he was very influential or helpful in terms of getting me here and he's been a very very important part of what I've achieved and and you know because he helped me as a player helped me win helped me win a national title I coached him on national teams uh, uh, I traded him away in Columbus because his family really didn't want to move there uh, at the time. So, you know, it's, he's always been a very dear friend and he's been very helpful uh, uh, to me and, and very uh, prominent in, in what I've achieved. Um, you know, but it, it was just fantastic. I mean, one of my first players got like 14 guys together from the first team I head coached at UCLA. and. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you another because I love telling stories. So. so the interesting story is so they got together and, and through Jamie Clark's help, they got together and they played like 6v6 six six uh, in Dempsey Pavilion and Jamie gave him some balls. And, and so uh, one of the guys, one of the guys got, you know, hurt a little bit early in the game. And so, well, there's like about three doctors in that group. So, well, do you want the orthopod, do you want the back guy, or do you want the general practitioner? Which doctor you want? <laughs> You know, so it, it, it's just that group, you know, was uh, it's amazing how how successful so many people in that group were. And and you had guys, you know, you had two guys who flew in from Toronto, somebody who flew in from Atlanta, somebody who came in from Boston. And, you know, I feel very privileged and very honored that they would uh, take that time to do that and tell some stories and drink some beer. <laughs>